Johnny coming at you from Toronto and I'm bringing you your 15 minute charge today and uh, what I want to kind of start with is by asking you what are you listening to? What is it that you're allowing yourself to listen to? And should a saved person and a sinner be listening to the same kind of stuff? Is it okay that we as Christians listen to the same music, watch the same shows, go watch the same movies as a sinner would? Is that okay? Or is there something wrong with that? And, or does it not matter? Does it really not matter what we're listening to? See, the thing is that the, our ears are more than just, just um, uh, sensory organs for our bodies. In fact, the Bible says that our, our, our ears are actually gateways. They're the gates to our hearts and to our souls. And did you know that the devil actually attacks us through our ears all the time? We get attacked through watching TV, through watching stuff on Instagram, on social media, through YouTube, uh, even through the news, through false prophecies, what, you know, all, all kinds, all kinds of things. The devil's trying to use our ears to try and uh, to try and distract us. And in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 31, it says this: "The ear that hears the rebukes of life." will abide among the wise. Basically, the Bible is saying that, for example, if you were to, to spend time with people who speak and live a godly example, people that will even tell you, you know, straight up, if you're doing something wrong, if you're going down the wrong path, the Bible says that you are wise to be hanging out with people like that. See, the what we hear really matters and what comes into our ears really matters. But the thing is that there's even some people that you can't tell them that they're wrong. There's some people that I know in my life that, you know, if, if they did something wrong and you tell them straight up, hey, you know, you did this wrong and, and they wouldn't admit it. Even though it is definitely something that they did wrong, they would have to try and justify it. They would try and come up with some excuses. They can't be told that they're wrong. But the question I have for you today is, do you listen well? Are you able to learn by being corrected? Do you welcome that from godly people in your life that you trust? See, we need to be people who have ears to, 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 to be corrected in our lives. If somebody comes and tells us, hey, or if a pastor or even your youth leader, someone that you look up to comes and says, hey, you know, I think that God is trying to tell you to do something different here. You know, what you said there wasn't quite nice. Or so I, do we receive them and be like, oh, okay, no problem. You know, let me change that about myself. Or do we get all defensive and say, who are you to tell me what to do? right in James chapter 1 verse 22 it says but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself this is powerful because we need to make sure that we're not just hearing the word and then just going on doing our own thing and not and not applying that word to our life but the but that we're actually doing something. See, the word doers in there in, in the Greek it actually means it means performers so be performers. We must perform the word. Basically, we need to walk by the word. We need to do the word. We need to perform the word. We need to apply the word in our life, not just hear it and then do nothing. And the Bible says clearly that if we're just listening, say for instance, you come to church and you're just listening to the message and then you go and it doesn't affect you at all. You haven't done anything to, 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 to apply that to your life. You haven't done anything to adjust your life, to, 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 to take the advice of what God is telling you. And the Bible says that you are deceiving yourself. In Luke chapter 8, verse 15, it says, But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, have, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. What is it saying? It basically says that when you hear the word and you receive it with a good heart, so you're paying attention, you receive the word of God, it says that you will bear good fruit by putting that word into practice. Right? In Matthew chapter 13, verse 19, it says, When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked comes, the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. Right? Basically, the Bible is saying that our hearts are like soil, right? It's, and it's capable of bearing good fruit out of our life. But instead of sowing good seeds, in our hearts, we're, we're sowing and reaping bad ones because of what we're listening to and what we're allowing to come into our hearts through our ears. The Bible says, you know, how is the seed sown? When one hears the word, that's when the seed was sown. This is powerful because 
As soon as you hear a word, it's planted in your heart. Whether it's good or it's bad, as soon as you hear something, it's planted in your heart. And the fruits of that will show in your character and attitude. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And we all know the saying that, you know, what goes up must come down, right? But did you know that what goes in must come out? In Luke chapter 6, verse 45, it says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And it says, And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. See, we can see that whatever is in our heart is going to come out through our talking and through our walking, through our actions, and even in your thinking. What you allow yourself to listen to is going to impact the way that you think, the way that you view life, the way that you go about life. You know, if I gave you the choice between smelling perfume for five minutes or smelling a freshly cut onion for five minutes, which one would you choose? See, it, it's, it's, it's very easy to tell the difference between uh, a good smell and a bad smell. But how do we tell the difference between good music and bad music? How do we tell the difference between good movies and bad movies, or good shows and bad shows? You know, there's a, there's a, there's a saying, there's, there's, a, there's a term called haunting melodies. You know what they are? It's like this. If you go to the store and, and say, for instance, you're shopping and then a catchy beat comes on, uh, on the radio or on the speakers in the store and you're doing shopping, you never heard the song before, but it's a little bit of a catchy beat. You're not really paying attention. You're doing your shopping. You're not listening to the music. You're just doing your shopping and everything. And sure enough, a couple hours later, you could be at home, you could be driving, you could be somewhere, and all of a sudden that tune pops back into your head. Maybe even the words of the, ly the lyrics of the chorus may even just sort of pop back into your head or like a tagline. How? You weren't listening to it. You weren't even paying attention to it. You were just doing it. But that just shows how powerful music is. It shows how powerful it is when we're listening to things. It gets deep into us. It gets deep into our hearts. See, when you put garbage into your heart, then garbage is going to flow out of your heart, right? And you could tell, you know, by looking at someone, but actually by the way that they're talking, you could tell what kind of stuff they're putting into their life, right? And today I felt that this was important to talk about because some of us, we think that, some of us think that we can listen to any and all music and it's harmless, but it's not true. The words are affecting you. See, if you're listening to, to people singing about fancy cars, having a lot of money, having big houses, and you listen to that, that kind of music all the time, it's going to start to affect you. It's going to start affecting your goals. It's going to start affecting what, what, you, what you look at as success. You know, the amount of money, you know, your, your couple hundred dollars in your bank account is not good enough anymore. Now you want to see millions because all the rappers and all the famous singers are all talking about making millions and having millions. And that's what success is. Or say, for instance, you're listening to music where someone is always, they're, 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 they're singing always like angry stuff and, and, and stubborn, like being stubborn and, and, and that kind of stuff then you're going to be angry all the time. Say, for instance, you listen to music that, that's talking about fears, then you're going to be fearful all the time. Then you got to be really careful with what kind of music you listen to. And another thing that happens sometimes with music is, and I'm, talk, I'm, I'm using music a lot here as, as an example, but say, for instance, something terrible happens in your life. Somebody does something bad to you and, and somebody hurts you. And at that time, you had a favorite song, right? There was a song that you really liked at that time. And now it's like five years later and then suddenly you hear that song on the radio or something and immediately you're reminded of the pain, the hurt, what you went through. Why? Because the song had such a, a close uh, association with what happened at that time, right? And it just comes to, it goes to show that, you know, what we listen to and what we put into our lives through our ears, it really matters. And it, and, and it has a big effect on us. So we have to guard our ears. We got to be careful with what we allow into our ears because if you allow yourself to hear it then you're allowing it then you're allowing yourself to have it sewn into your heart right and when you allow it to sew into your heart then it's going to start to come out of you it's going to come out of you in your attitude and the way that you think and the way that you talk to people so you got to be really careful with what you are allowing yourself to listen to and 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 a lot of times listening it's, it's a distraction that the devil uses 
Okay, let me put it this way. Say for instance, the, the, when a mother comes to a daycare center or something and they drop off their toddler, and you ever see those toddlers, those little babies that they just can't let their mother go, you know, they come to try to drop them off and they're turning around and trying to hug onto the mom and they don't want to be left there and they don't want the mom to leave. And a lot of times what the teacher will do is the teacher will suddenly make some sort of noise, right? Or ring a bell or something to try and distract the child. So that when the child turns to look at the teacher, the mother can easily just slip away and go out the door without the baby uh, or without the toddler recognizing or without the toddler realizing, right? So what's happening? They're, the teacher was making noise to make the child look somewhere else. And this is what, you gotta be careful that the devil isn't making noise in your life to take your eyes off of God. You gotta be careful that the devil isn't using music or shows or movies or things, other things that we're listening to. He's not using that as noise to distract you from what God is trying to tell you. See, something that, that we Christians need to realize is that listening and absorbing the Word of God is a choice that we have to make. Just as much as we sit down and we decide, we make a choice to sit down and read the Word of God. Just like that, if you go to church, you're listening to this, you're listening to a message, you got to make the choice that I'm going to listen to this, I'm going to pay attention to this. This is a choice that you have to make that, 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 that tells you, to, that, that you're telling yourself to listen and pay attention. I mean, for example, how many times has the pastor come up, you know, or, or the announcer come up and given us some, some announcements for the day, you know, on, on, on Wednesdays we got Bible studies, and on Fridays we got this, and on Saturday we have this, and then sometimes they'll turn around and be like, all right, so what did I just say? What, what's on Tuesday? What's on Friday? And the congregation sometimes they're stunned, they're like, uh, the, the, and they don't know. Why? They just said it, but they weren't listening. You know what I mean? See, the thing is that, when, when, when the announcer is speaking, it's not like they were purposely rudely ignoring the announcer. They weren't ignoring the pastor. They didn't make a decision, oh, I'm not going to pay attention to it. They sat there, you're listening to the pastor, you're listening to the announcer speak, and, and yet you're not actually listening. You see the difference? And so we got to be careful that we're not doing that when the word is being spoken to us. Make sure that you make the decision. Anytime you're sitting in a service, anytime you're sitting in front of, you know, even an online service, whatever it is, that you make a decision. You know what, Lord, I want to open up my heart to you and I'm going to absorb everything that you're trying to tell me today. I'm going to accept everything that you're trying to tell me today. I'm going to, I'm going to listen and, and pay attention to what you're telling me. And I'm going to see when you allow that to do, when you allow yourself to do that, then you're taking a stand. And when you take that stand, you're allowing your heart to start, uh, uh, to allow some good seeds to come into your heart. See, when you listen to the word of God, it's good seed. It's good stuff. It's good uh, for, for, your, for yourself to grow, to make your life better, to, to move yourself towards God. It's good for you. So when you listen to the word of God, you allow that seed to grow in your life. And when you have time, I want you guys to read Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 13, the entire chapter, it's about the seeds, and the, basically the entire chapter is about, about listening. And if you, if you read it, you'll see that three out of the four uh, hearers in that parable of the seeds, they didn't listen, right? And the danger is this, it's that when sometimes, you know, sometimes we'd be listening to the word of God, but not listening. And the danger is that God is trying to sometimes give us some life-saving stuff. Sometimes he's trying to give us some life-changing uh, uh, things that we need to do. And because we're not listening, we lose it. We're not, we're, 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 we don't gain from it. We're not able to listen to it. See, you got to understand and you got to remember that your heart is going to follow your ears, right? So the good news is that as we continue to connect God, uh, connect with God more and more, as we start to get closer to God during this time, and as we start introducing all this stuff, we can start introducing godly things to our ears. As you're spending this time, I'm hoping really that you're spending this quarantine time getting closer to God, getting God on your side, and and and, and making a move with God, and asking God to come and fill your life, fill your family, fill your heart. And as you're doing that, we can also use this time to introduce more godly things to our ears. That we're not just watching garbage and we're not just listening to garbage and just watching things for the sake of time to go by, but we're watching and listening to messages, we're listening to songs of, uh, about God, we're, 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 we're allowing ourselves to, to, to grow in our hearts and to put good seeds in our hearts. Amen? You know, have you ever asked God for a loving heart? Have you ever asked God for a gracious heart? Have you ever asked God for a spiritual heart? See, 
If you want those things, then it's time to feed yourself with those things, with what you listen to. So start feeding your ears with spiritual things. Start feeding your ears with loving things and, and, and things like that. That's going to help your heart grow in that manner. Amen? In Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. If you want to know what kind of stuff that God wants us to be listening to, this list applies. And basically, in, in the list it says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue of, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, do these and the God of peace will be with you. This is the kind of stuff that we need to feed ourselves with. This is the kind of stuff that we need to make sure that we're listening to. So when you're listening to your music, is it pure? Is it noble? Can you see Jesus sitting with you, you know, bobbing his head to that music and really agreeing with the words of that music? See, if you allow garbage into your life, then you're allowing garbage to come out of your life. It's as simple as that, because what goes in, it must come out. But see, if you allow godly things into your life, and you allow godly things into your heart, then godly things are going to come out of you, and godly things will come out of your life. See, God has shown and proven to me many, many times over my, over my life, uh, uh, throughout my life, that, that I need to be careful with what I listen to. I used to listen to all kinds of trash and I used to listen to all kinds of garbage music that was poisoning my life. It was poisoning the view of the the, the view that I had of life. It was it was it was it was poisoning uh, my decisions. It was poisoning my goals. I thought that my life needed to represent and, and show this, 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 this. I need to have this and that, and I need to have that kind of car and that kind of house, and I need to have this kind of that. And, and I thought that my life had because I was basing myself on what I was listening to. I was listening to the music all the time. When I was in high school, all these rappers, and I used to listen to that kind of stuff all the time. And it, and it really had an effect on me. And then there was one day that I, I just had this encounter with God. And at this time, I was deep into this kind of music. I was deep into listening to all kinds of rap and, and all kinds of even underground rap, which is terrible stuff down in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in that kind of music, very you know uh, evil stuff and there's sinful thoughts and, and, and things that happen in there uh, that I was implanting into my life and I didn't even know. And, uh, and there was one day that God came and spoke to me and that day I was in tears and I brought back that I was listening to music on my CDs and I broke every single CD, I smashed it, I, I deleted all my songs from all my MP3s from my computer, I got rid of it all because God spoke to me and let me tell you, the day I was liberated from that music, it made such a difference, such a difference. To the point where now, when I go somewhere and listening to, and someone's listening to music that's not godly, I can feel it. My spirit starts to twist and turn, and 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 and, 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 and it's not good. And see, God can do the same for you. And so that's what I want you guys to do over the next couple of hours. And uh, when you spend some time with God tonight, even just spend some time and say, God, what is it that I'm putting in my heart that is not of you? What is it that I'm watching on TV that is not of you? There's some TV shows that were just that were like 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 popular shows that I was watching, and I was just watching just because everybody else was watching, and all these entertaining shows. And God had to show me that some of the stuff had some underlining stuff in it that wasn't godly, and I had to stop watching them. And God is teaching me this stuff because I wanted God to tell me what's good and what isn't for my life. And this is what we all need to do. So I want to end by asking the same question that I started with. What are you listening to? Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for this uh, this time. Oh Lord God, I thank you for every single person who is listening to this uh, this broadcast. Oh Lord God, and I pray, oh Lord God, over every single soul, Lord God, that as they hear this word, oh Lord God, let there be an effect of change in their hearts, oh Lord God, so that they may be able to take things out of their life, oh Lord God, that is not of you, Lord God. And I pray, oh Lord God, that as they continue to examine their own life and their own hearts and, and look into what they've been listening to, oh Lord God, and start to uh, put it up against your requirements, oh Lord God. And I pray, oh Lord God, that you help us to take out the things, oh Lord God, from our life that is not of you. Help us to, 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 to cut habits dead in its tracks in our life, oh Lord God, that is not of you, Lord God. And I pray, oh Lord God, over every single person that is watching, Lord God, that you speak to them. In your most precious name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you guys. That was your 15 minute charge today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. God bless you.